Hi, welcome back to The Shed for episode 43 of GGBO 2023, where you'll find me tackling the job that I've been dreading for quite a long time now, and that is getting the complex electrics in this guitar sorted out. And even though this setup is going to be quite complex and I've never played with one of these trevelos before and I am slightly anxious about getting it to work properly, that anxiety is nothing compared to what I'm feeling about the electronics on this thing. I've thrown a few bells and whistles in without really thinking about how I'm going to make them work. But I'm pretty sure if we work through this in a logical fashion, we can achieve what we need to. So there's a number of things we need to do. We need to wire the pickup into the volume and tone controls, which is fairly straightforward. And I have got a wiring diagram that came with a pickup that seems to cover that quite well. We need to coil tap the pickup from the volume control. We need to wire in this kill switch, which could be interesting. We also need to install and wire in the boost circuit that's going to be worked from this control and switched on and off from the tone pot. And then that obviously needs to go to the output, which is here. But a further complication there is that it's a stereo jack because one of the lugs on the stereo jack will be used to interrupt the battery power when the jack is removed so that we can extend the battery life. Additionally, this kill switch is illuminated, so that needs to be wired into the battery to make it glow a nice blue. So there's an awful lot going on there. And I think the best way I can approach this is if I break it down into chunks that we approach one at a time. So first off, we're going to wire the pickup in to the volume and tone controls. Once we know that works, we can then coil tap the pickup onto that switch. I think once we're there with those two controls, I will then wire in the kill switch so that we know that all of that works independent of this boost circuit. Some of that is a little bit of a gray area for me. Wiring in this boost circuit is a total gray area. I don't really know how I'm gonna work that. I probably need to do a bunch of research before we even start, but that is gonna be the last thing we do. So I think the first thing we'll do is we'll get this turned over, we'll get the cover off the back and we can start to work on some of the simple bits and get those out of the way. Okay, so I've pulled everything back out of the guitar just to give me a little bit more room to work on. And I'm gonna start off by just doing the work on the volume and tone pots just to make them work as we need them to. Volume wise, I just need to ground one of these lugs and then we can get the pickup attached to it, get that put back in. Tone, I need to ground a lug on here and then also add the capacitor, which will also have to go onto the volume pot as well. From there, I think we can put these controls back in and I'll be able to work the rest of the wires on in situ. It'll probably make it a little bit easier. I've got my capacitor, I've got all my tools and everything ready. So we'll tackle that bit first and then see where the rest of it takes us.
Okay, so, so far we've got the capacitor wired into the tone control and the volume control. We've got the hot from the pickup going into the volume control as well. And we've got this green wire here, which is the ground from the pickup. Those are the two additional wires from the pickup, which are joined together at the moment, but they will be switched onto here at some point. And we've also got this ground on the pickup wire, which will also get grounded. I've put this red wire on, which is the hot to the output. And I need to just add a ground once these are back in to go to the temporary output that we're going to use just while we test the pickup and the other stuff. Hope that makes sense. So I'm going to chuck all this back into the guitar now, just add that extra ground and then we can just test that at least the pickup works. Okay, so that's all wired up now. Been a little bit of a nightmare, to be honest. It's quite fiddly in there, but I'll turn on and everything seems to be working there. And we've got a tone control, so that's all good. So with that done, the next thing is I want to wire in this push-pull switch to see if we can affect a coil tap on this. Okay, so that's wired in now, so that should be humbucking, that should be split coil. And it seems to be working okay. And we've still got a tone control in both positions. So that appears to have worked, which is good. So next up is I want to take this switch now and just find out which of these pins do what on the back. So we can wire in both the light and the wires that we need to make it actually function as a kill switch. And the theory behind this is, we want this as an always open switch, so that when it's not depressed, it's open. And then when we press it, that closes the circuit and effectively shorts the guitar out. It will just send all the signal straight to ground. And we'll do that by wiring it into the output jack. But first of all, I need to understand which pins do what. And I've had a quick play. What I found out is these two lugs here are the positive and the ground for the lighting circuit. So that's quite straightforward. And then that terminal at the top and the central terminal. So if I put it onto that one and I've got a circuit, if I put it on that one though, I've got nothing. Operate the switch and I get a tiny little bit of resistance, meaning I've got a circuit there. So the live and the neutral from the battery will go to those two eventually. I'm not going to do it now because I need to actually use a different jack socket to interrupt that power supply once the jack's not in. So I can't do that right now. But the two wires I need to actually make the kill switch work are going to those two. So that is quite straightforward. I'll get that wired up and we can see if we can make it work. Now this switch actually came with a handy dandy plug and little wiring harness on it. Unfortunately, that is way too deep to actually go into the cavity that we have in the guitar. So we can't use it, which is a shame because that would have simplified things a little bit. So rather than use that, I need to kind of replicate that and create my own wiring. So to make things easy, I'm gonna get this into the vise. And as we identified these two lugs here, are simply the power for the light in the switch. And these are the actual terminals that we need to use to create the kill switch function. So I'm gonna put some red and black wires onto those two so we can identify them as the, the switching wires. And then I will put two different colored wires on for the LED, just so we know which those are. I'm then gonna heat shrink all of those terminals so we don't get any shorts in there. And then I'll probably put a bit of bigger heat shrink over all of those four cables just to keep them together and tidy because 
it is starting to look a little bit of a mess in there so we want to reduce that if we possibly can so i'll get the soldering iron switch back on and get that sorted out okay so i've got all my wires prepped up they've all been trimmed and tinned and everything so i'm just going to start soldering those into position it's a little bit tricky because there's not a huge amount of room but i'm sure it'll be fine and i think it's going to be quite important to trim these down as much as possible just to keep everything nice and neat because this control cavity is starting to look a bit scruffy with the amount of wires and stuff that's running around And I've just salvaged a few little bits of wire from the original little wiring harness that came with the switch. And we'll just get a bit of heat shrink onto each of those. And then we'll just heat shrink those all together as well. Just to keep them all nice and tidy. So with that done, I think we can get this installed back into the guitar get it wired temporarily to the output jack and then we can just test to make sure that the kill switch function works. And that's been wired in now just temporarily to this mono jack socket. And all it does is it just wires into the same terminals, ground to ground, hot to hot. 
and then when you activate the switch what you're actually doing is closing the circuit which just shorts the whole electrics out thus killing the signal so we'll just turn that on and check that it works you might be able to hear the slight hum there and if we press the switch no hum and just to make double sure nothing so that works an absolute treat so to catch up on ourselves we've got a pickup that's wired in we can coil tap it the volume and the tone are both working really nicely the kill switch kills the signal which is amazing so that leaves two jobs to do one is to replace this mono output with the stereo one i'll do that last that's fairly straightforward but the other one is to wire in this homemade boost circuit and i'll be honest with you i haven't got a clue how i'm going to do that so i'm going to have to do a little bit of research on how that works so i think that is a, a really good point to leave this video we haven't actually got a huge amount to do we need to finish off the wiring which i think is probably about an hour's work and then we need to kind of get this strung up and set up which i'm hoping won't be too much but at best it'll be a few hours so we're on track to finish this in the next video and we can get a demo done and we can hear what this thing sounds like but that's going to be for a couple of days time so as always until then don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this subscribe if you haven't already done so and i'll see you in a few days time thanks a lot for watching bye bye